Hello. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be live and seeing you at last. Hello, other Georgia. My name's Georgia as well. Uh, hello, Fatima. I'm glad that you're ready. Okay, so I'm really excited. I think I might sort of wait maybe like 60 seconds or so for other people to show up. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Brandon. Nice to meet you all, Simran, Huma. Too many, too many people to say hi to. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys turn up. Which board is this? So this is going to be lots of exam boards all together. So we're gonna be covering the content from both AQA, edXL and OCR. Hello everyone, hello Saketh, hello Alexi. Nice to see you all. I hope everybody's having a good first few weeks. I hope it's not gotten stressful yet. So with notes, there are there's sort of like a printout that you can download um, with the presentation slides, and then you can fill those in, or you can take your own notes. Um, notes are good no matter sort of how you want to do them. And the videos will be uploaded. Aha, so in the comments, the printout has just been popped in by one of my lovely colleagues. IAL is tough. This will be good for revision. So as I'm gonna talk through in a little bit, I'm gonna cover sort of what we're going to be covering. It's excellent revision. Welcome, Olga. Nice to see you, or not see you. Nice to see your tiny YouTube figure thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Ahmed. A-levels drained me at the time as well. Okay. All right. I think I'm possibly going to share my lovely screen with you so you can see my presentation that I've made for you guys. Right. Boop. Okay. Let me know if you can see everything. Yes, I think you can. Ah, ha, ha. Right, perfect. Oh, hello, Brandon. I am glad you're ready. You can see everything, Wicked. All right, that all looks perfect. Okay, so welcome everyone to this web class and it's going to be on atomic structure and the periodic table. So really the sort of most basic things that you need to know for chemistry. Um, What's going to happen is I'm going to introduce myself. So as I said right at the beginning, but some of you weren't here, my name is Georgia. Um, I'm the head of chemistry here at SNAP Provise. If you were in yesterday to the biology web class, you would have met my colleague, the head of biology. Um, I have sort of like a combined bachelor's slash master's in natural sciences, which is a degree for people that cannot pick um, so it was sort of a merge of chemistry and then a little bit of neuroscience and some other stuff. But yes, mostly chemistry. Uh, and I've been teaching and tutoring for the last six years. So I think I can help you guys with your revision or with your learning, depending on how you're doing it. Um, but yes, so I'm really excited. Uh, so just a note on what these web classes are. So hopefully in school, you will have gone into sort of like all of the tiny little details this is meant to be a recap and sort of the key points and the key concepts and then helping you guys understand exam technique. Um, so, and also you have the chance to ask me some questions and things like that. So it's not gonna be sort of like lots of little, little details. And I will sort of talk about the things that I'm specifically not going to mention in this in a bit. So luckily this is all for free for now. Um, for the next few weeks, but eventually they're going to be part of our sort of top tier package at SnapRevise, and I'll sort of be showing you a little bit more of the SnapRevise website if you haven't seen it um, a bit later on. So that is going to launch on October 16th, and these will become part of that package. But don't worry, if you can't afford it, then there are going to be a few free ones on YouTube sort of popping up um, as well. So. I'll talk more about that later and some lovely incentive for you guys to sort of stay to the end. So there's going to be sort of like a prize um, if you 
follow us on Insta and share a picture to your story. So don't worry, it's only going to be there for 24 hours and tag us in it, then somebody's going to get an account for free, which is nice. Um, and then there's a coupon code at the end for everyone. So it will be a really big discount for all of our content. So that should be nice for you. And it's sort of like a one-time discount. So you do want to stay and get this one. Right, so on to objectives. Oh no, Jesse, I'm sorry. I will sort of talk very slowly so you can fill your water bottle, but I can't go that slowly, I'm sorry. Um, objectives right so today we're going to be doing we're going to try to understand atomic structure and we're going to think about how isotopes get involved with that we're going to do some calculations which i know everybody hates um for relative atomic slash isotopic mass so this is a little bit of a confusing one because i know a lot of exam boards sort of use them interchangeably so i'll talk about those distinctions in a bit um, and we're also going to be talking about mass spectrometry uh, and use mass spec to calculate the mass of, and the sort of isotopic mass of some molecules. I'm not gonna be covering sort of the history. Um, that's really memorizing. So you guys can do that in your own time. Uh, and I'm also not gonna be going into like lots of detail of time of flight um, mass spec because only one of the examples, I'll do an overview, but not all of it. So we're just sort of, I'm not going to read through these. Uh, you guys can just see what spec points that you're looking at. You should kind of be doing this every time you're studying, making sure you're, you can use the spec points online to tick off what you should be doing. Um, so this is for AQA. These are the points we're covering for that. So this is, these are all sort of the first ones. Um, for OCR, they're all very similar. So I believe it's not OCR that, no, it's not. Um, and then the last of all, we've got edXL. You guys can have like a quick whiz through these and have a look and see if you recognize these points from school. Oh, you guys having a chat in the comments. That makes me happy. Oh, that's an interesting combination. Biology, chemistry and sociology. Jennifer, I wonder what you plan to do with that. Okay. Right, so the first thing we're really going to do is talk about what we should kind of already know, what we should know from GCSE, um, so that we can properly get in our, our new A-level knowledge. So this is where you guys are going to be sort of helping me out with some answers. So this is Bohr's model of the atom, so sort of the almost most recent one, and nice simple question, what is that thing in the middle? What is the red and blue bit in the middle? Somebody want to put that in the comments? I don't know how much of a lag this is going to have. So nucleus. Thank you, Brandon. Wicked. Cool. So that's the nucleus. And does somebody want to tell me what the nucleus is formed of? What sort of, what things are in there? Yes. Protons and neutrons. Ooh, look at that. Protons and neutrons. So which ones are going to be the protons and which ones are going to be the neutrons, guys? Anyone? Sort of what's the difference? Red, yeah, the red ones are protons. And that's because they're positively charged, if you guys can see. So we've talked about protons and neutrons, so we've only really got one other part of an atom. What's the green stuff, people? Green things? Yes, you're all correct so far. Rari, yes, protons are po positive. Fatima, thank you. Green is electrons, wicked. Cool. So sort of, we kind of all need to know what the mass of all of these things are. So does anyone remember mass of protons, mass of neutrons? Pop those in the comments for me. Getting lots of electrons. One, Simran. Yeah, one for protons. Wicked. Yeah, we're getting one for protons, one for everything. Cool. One for neutrons. Yes, thank you, Brandon. And for electrons, oh, look at you guys getting all of the exact figures. See, I never remember the exact figure for electrons and you don't really need it for your exam. You just need to be able to say that it's negligible, uh, meaning it's so small, we don't think about it. Uh, great, cool. So the last bit of this slide is we wanna be looking at this thing here, which is sort of how everything's set up in the periodic table. 
So we've got X here, which you guys should all know is the element. And we've got these two things here, and these sort of confuse people a little bit because we have an atomic number and we have a mass number. Can someone tell me which way round it is? Which way round is, which one is A and which one is Z? There's a little bit of a clue there. Which one is the atomic number? Which one's mass? Atomic number, ooh, not quite AFT. A, yeah, A is the atomic number. A for atomic. Cool, yeah. And Z, has anyone said? Z, Z is not the atomic number. So we kind of sort of A for atomic. Yeah, Z, thanks, Brandon. Z is the mass number. So the way I like to remember it is that the mass is sort of, mass number is always bigger than the atomic number. So it's heavier, so it's on the bottom. I don't know if that helps anybody else, but that always helped me remember things. Okay, moving on. So that's what we should already know from GCSE. Thank you guys, you're so speedy with your responses. Right, so we're gonna have a quick look at the periodic table to make sure that you guys remember what, <laughs> yes, Brandon, stop answering so quickly. No, it's lovely. Um, thank you, Brandon. Uh, yes, groups and periods in the periodic table. I wanna make sure you guys remember how it works. So can someone tell me what, does the, what do the columns mean? the bits that go up and down. What are the columns? Anyone? The groups, yeah, the groups, cool. So, um, yes, excellent, all of these, so many people, Simran, Esther, yeah, Daisy, ah, so many, cool. Groups, they represent the groups. And go in a bit more detail for me, what is a group? What's a group, people? What does that tell us about? Yes, Esther, the number of electrons in the outer shell. And that is super important because that tells you all about reactivity, um, which we will be learning later on in the year or you should be later on in the year um, at school. Cool, so we're gonna go for rows. What do the rows, what do the horizontal bits mean? Rows are periods, yes, wicked. Someone tell me what a period is. Thank you, Fatima. What do the periods tell us? Yes, the number of shells. Ooh. Oh dear, what's happening? Cool. Periods are the number of shells. Guys, I'm getting used to not touching the screen with my hands because it changes the slide. I am sorry, but yes, you are all correct. It is the number of shells, wicked. Okay, so this is sort of our basics, what that means. Can someone, we've got this big orange bit in the middle and that is not included in our groups. We never sort of, we don't count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, blah, blah, blah. We only have eight groups. So what's that big orange bit? Yes, the transition metals. So you need to remember that those aren't part of the grouping system. And I'm really sorry about my handwriting. I hope it's legible. And sort of one last note, I just wanna remind you guys that even though hydrogen is sort of floating up the top there, electrons wise, it's in group one. It floats because it's such a weirdo. Hydrogen has lots of really weird sort of things going on because it's so teeny tiny but it is group one. Ooh, yes Aisha D block we're not quite yet there yet but um why is what is wrong with us I don't know what's wrong with it I have no idea um perhaps I shall look at that later but thank you chemistry person with scary chemistry symbol as picture F Jamie that is very enthusiastic typing Okay, so we sort of have covered everything that we need to know from GCSE. Uh, and we're gonna be looking at our part one. Um, so the first thing we need to sort of cover is what on earth is sort of the mass and what does that mean about isotopes? So what is an isotope, what is mass? So as it says, the atomic number is unique for each element, unlike the mass number. Um, can somebody tell me how you work out the mass of an element? What do you sort of, what two values do you need to do that? 
N and P. Yeah, Ahmed, do you want to sort of expand what N and P are? Yes. Yeah, neutrons plus protons. Because as we learned at GCSE, they both have a mass of one. Cool. And that is this number down here, number 27. So if that is, if we sort of know what our mass is, does anyone remember what an isotope is? Because I think, James, you've already said it. Atom from the same element with a different number of neutrons. Yes. So guys, an element, an isotope is a, something that has the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. And you're all writing it down. So you're wonderful. And I'm going to write it in for you. So an atom with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So that can have lots of effects because sort of the thing that determines our reactivity is really our electrons, not our neutrons, but they do have sort of small subtle changes. Um, Metal, it's sort of all of the exam boards merged. Um, I do mention if something is sort of not on all of them. Uh, right. Oh, look at this Ainsworth. You can work out the mass using mass spec comparing to, yes, we're going to get onto that. You're, you're jumping the gun, but it's fabulous. Um, so we're going to be thinking about carbon as an example. So we have carbon 12, carbon 13 and carbon 14. So what we want to first do is do some like quick maths and figure out how many neutrons that means there are. So we've got carbon 12 with six protons. Can somebody tell me how many neutrons carbon 12 will have? Anyone? Fatima, you are right. Oh, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong, aren't I? Hamayan. That is, you, you, look at you guys, you're all so smart. Okay, cool. So six carbon 12 neutrons. Yep. Yeah. And for carbon 13? Yeah, Hamayan, you're totally right. We've got seven neutrons for carbon 13 and eight for carbon 14. So that means that what we want to do is I'm going to be writing in the element here and you guys are going to tell me what goes on the top and what goes on the bottom. Is the top number the atomic number or the mass number? Anyone? So many apes, you guys are completely right. Top atomic, yeah, wicked. So we know what that is, that's six. And for all of them, it's going to be six because the atomic number is the same for each. And can somebody tell me what goes on the bottom for each? Just sort of put it in a line. Bottom is the mass. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got carbon 12, which is 12, carbon 13, which is 13, and carbon 14, which is 14. So does anyone know which one is the most common? Which is the most common isotope of carbon? You may have sort of heard it bandied about. 12, yeah. Yes, Fatima. Yes, Sue. Yes, Brandon. So many people. Cool. Yeah, carbon 12. Yes. So it says it right here. This 98.9 .9 is the abundance. And you find carbon 12 in things like the human body, um, in like sort of carbon dioxide and any drugs like paracetamol, all the carbon in that is likely to be carbon 12 with a sprinkling of the other isotopes. How do they know the abundance? Actually, we're going to be learning that by looking at mass spec, Brandon. So we'll we'll be doing that later. Um, so does anyone, has anyone heard of anything that carbon 14 does? This one's a little bit, yes, Rari, one is radioactive. So you've sort of hit the nail on the head for that question. Carbon dating, yes, yes, lovely. Cool, so carbon 14 is the radioactive one. And that means that it can be used for carbon, radiocarbon dating. Somebody want to sort of tell me what that is? What is radiocarbon dating? Yes, because of decay. Yes, carbon is in your teeth. Hello, Jamie. Gosh, you just, you're all about the Fs. All about the Fs today. Epstein, half-life stuff. Yes, <laughs> half-life stuff is happening. Yeah, so essentially if it breaks down, and we know the rate that it breaks down, 
we can figure out how old something is by looking at how much carbon-14 is in there. Yes, James Polk, wicked, that is exactly the case. And the carbon-13, you won't really address until next year, until year 13, because you use carbon-13 in some forms of NMR spectroscopy. Um, physics, ew, ah, physics isn't that bad. I like physics. A lot of, a lot of chemistry is like physics. Chemistry is basically um, the physics of the electron specifically, I'm afraid. So anyway, quick recap. Cool. Let's look at ions. So <laughs> ions are, they're, they're charged atoms or molecules. Um, and the sort of really important thing to know about them is that the charge depends on the balance between protons and electrons. And that should be kind of a little bit logical. Can someone tell me why it would depend on the balance of charge between protons and electrons? What is it about them that would make them control charge? I am English. That makes sense. <laughs> electrons, because they lose the same amount. Oh, Boumika was sort of closest yeah, we're kind of getting there. So like, yes, Fatima, yeah, protons are positive, electrons are negative. Yeah, and they have the same sort of charge, but opposite. So protons are a plus one, electrons are negative one, which means that if you have the same number of protons and the same number of neutrons, blah, 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 not neutrons, same number of protons as electrons, you'll have a neutral molecule. And that's this middle one here. So if you actually sort of count them, You've got one, two, three, four, five electrons and one, two, three, four, five protons in the middle there. So we can put neutral because the charges are balanced. Alex, I want to know why Jamie loves F as well. We should, we should find out. Gosh, that is the most interesting G I've ever written. Sorry, guys. Charges, neutral charges are balanced. Wicked, cool. So if that is neutral, if the middle one is neutral, what charge is the one on the left going to have? What charge does the cation have? Yes, Fatima, you're completely right. It's not an ion, it's an atom because ions are charged atoms. What are we saying? We've got we've got a few different answers. We've got positive, negative, positive, negative. The one on the left. The one on the left is positively charged. So if you count, count for me. So count one, two, three, four electrons on the outside. And then we've got these five protons in the middle, which means that we have more protons than electrons, which means that we have a positive charge. So cations are always positively charged. And this specific one has a plus one charge. And when we're looking at charge, we do square brackets and we can put one plus to represent that yes brandon cations are positive and anions are negative but yes we can we can either just sort of know that off by heart or we can count so if we look on to the one on the right we've got five in the middle and then we've of our protons and we've got one two three four five six electrons on the outside which means that it should be negative Yes, Rari, I know, possibly I know why you think that, because when you learn cathodes and anodes, they're the other way around. So your cathode is negative, your anode is positive, whereas your cation is positive and your anion is negative, just because, you know, chemists just want to mess with your mind. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit confusing. So we've got anion negatively charged, and that means we're going to use our square brackets again, but put a one minus charge on there. Yes, Sue, hydrogen fuel cells, exactly. That's what we're talking about. Cool. All right. So recap, ions are charged. They depend on the balance of protons and electrons. Cations are positive, anions are negative. Right, so this is where we sort of like, I see how you guys are doing because we are going to be doing some exam questions. So before we do that, I wanna make sure that everybody sort of is up to speed. Does anyone need me to go back to anything? Yeah, 
one for straightforwards one yes if you want to send me some really excellent emojis i don't know if youtube allows that that would be great oh look at all the smiles three okay ramakrishnan do you want to tell me what is confusing and i might be able to do a quick quick recap asander as well if you guys can could give me something that is specifically confusing ah look at all the emojis excellent no no notes on what is actually confusing okay so what we'll do then is we'll do the exam questions and then if it's still confusing at the end hopefully you guys will be able to tell me what exactly you're not quite getting and the exam questions will maybe help you get a better idea of that um so let's let's do that let's go ahead all right so before I sort of like jump into the actual question I just want to make a little bit of a note of how we we sort of go for questions and I know that the first few lines is often feels really pointless to read but sometimes it contains key information so I'm afraid that we kind of just have to go through looking at the kind of slightly boring Tin mining was a common practice on Dartmoor in the pre-Roman times. Most of the tin was extracted and mixed with copper to produce bronze. So that didn't actually um, come up, that nothing useful is in there, likely. Because the next part of the question is, the table below shows the subatomic particles of an isotope of tin. And then you need to fill in your protons, your neutrons and your electrons. And this is about the time that it would be useful for you guys to have a periodic table up. So you're all on your computers. So I suggest that you either, <coughs> oh, sorry, bit of a cough. I'm gonna sip my tea. Cool. So what we're going to do is, you guys are gonna need a periodic table and you're going to have a go at this exam question. Try not to type any answers for maybe like 20 seconds because we don't want other people to not have a chance to answer it. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you, Brandon. Excellent. So we're going to give you about 30 seconds and I'm going to sip my tea while we do that because obviously my throat is not liking all this talking. So have a go. I think one of my colleagues will be posting a link to a periodic table um, down below. If not, there's one called ptable.com. On the screen, that is probably a good idea. All right, let me, I'll do that. Yes. All right. So my colleagues posted P table up for you guys. All right, let's go for answers. So how many protons? Yeah, metal, you got it. It's 50 protons. It's so 180 neutrons is a little bit too much. Oh, no, you're saying 180 minus 50. Yeah, 50 protons. 50 electrons, yeah, because it doesn't say it's an ion, so we must assume that it's neutral on how many neutrons. Yes, Brandon, lovely. And Sue, yeah, Sue Savage, <laughs> Sue Savage Sugar. I really like your name, by the way. It's, it's pretty epic. Awesome, okay, cool. So same kind of deal for the next part of the question. In terms of subatomic particles, how would atoms of 100 20 tin differ from the atoms of tin 118. So another 30 seconds, guys. Have a go at writing this down. Yeah, two more. But so when we've got a compare question, so this is really important, guys. When you have something comparing, your answer has to compare. So you have to say this one is different because of this. So have another go at writing that out in sort of a better exam style.
you basically want to assume that your examiner is not a chemist. They won't know what you're talking about. All they're looking at is the exam boards. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Lily, great. So Lily said that there are two more neutrons in tin 120 than tin uh, 118. Yeah. Perfect. So we really, so I'm going to put it sort of even more detailed than that. I'm going to put tin 120 would have 70 neutrons. 100, tin 118 would have 68 neutrons. Wicked. So you really you really want to just sort of be as detailed as you can. I mean, like, don't go overboard, still only write two lines, but um, you don't want to sort of skimp on the details and lose a mark. Cool. So that is our exam questions done. And that allows us to move on to the next topic, which is relative mass. Um, so relative mass is sort of, it's in the in the title. So it's relative because we use carbon 12 that we talked about before as sort of our base. So because hydrogen has a mass of one, it's one twelfth of the mass of carbon 12. So it's relative mass is one. Um, everything is relative to carbon 12, which is sort of like the standard mass that we use in chemistry. Um, so the important thing, and I've sort of the wording I've used in the bit below is exactly the wording that you need to use in your exam. So the masses on the periodic table are a weighted average. So does anyone know why are they a weighted average? What does weighted mean? Anybody? Any ideas? I'll give you a clue. Is something, oh, wicked, yeah. Fatima, lovely. So it's we have different isotopes of all of our elements. As we saw, we had carbon 12, 13, and 14, all with different abundances. So when we say weighted mass, the weighted part means that sort of the more abundant a carbon isotope is, the sort of more it determines what the relative atomic mass will be. And the sort of less common ones sort of contribute less to the mass. So, ooh. All right, so the masses on the periodic table are a weighted average of relative atomic masses of the isotopes of an element. Cool, and if you guys find that you can't read my writing <laughs> do leave it in the comments because i'm a bit worried that it's illegible um but yes let me know cool so when you're looking at sort of um the periodic table and it's a decimal and you're wondering why protons plus neutrons is coming up with a decimal that's because it's weighted rather than because it's i will be going through mass spec tommy but not in like massive detail but I will be going through that. That's sort of like the next section of this. Cool. All right. So just keeping in mind that the proton number or the atomic number should never be a decimal because of course that's literally counting protons rather than being an average. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be calculating the relative isotopic slash atomic mass of carbon together based on the abundance are we all learning the same things? I hope you're learning the same things, Tommy. I don't know how you could be learning different. Do you mean, I hope, are we all learning from the same exam board? Because this is sort of like a mix of exam boards. Um, right. So the way we do it is we actually, that, does anyone know? Does anyone know how you work out relative atomic mass? I will sort of let you guys have a stab at how you do it. Any ideas? So I've given you the, the actual atomic mass. Yes. Okay. So yeah, 
Yes, Ahmed. So mass times abundance uh, over 100. So what I will say is that it's only over 100 if you're using it as a percentage. So if you've got the abundance as a percentage, we do divide by 100. So in this case, we're going to be doing 98.9 times 12. I'm going to put that in brackets because you guys should know by now that brackets are important for your calculator. Then 1.1 times 13 and then 0.1 times 14. And then we're going to divide by 100 because our abundances are in percentage. And you guys don't actually need to put that in your calculator because obviously I've already given you the answer. And you're going to have a go at practicing that in the exam question. So don't forget how to do that. So remember it's abundance times the mass divided by a hundred. And if you're putting it in your calculator, you must put brackets around each part. Right, so the next thing we're gonna be sort of thinking about is relative molecular mass. And this should be relatively simple. Ooh, so many relatives, uh, <laughs> relatively simple because um, you're essentially just adding things up. So does anybody want to sort of give me a, take a stab at this, with this CO2 molecule here, how do you think you work out the relative molecular mass? Ah, oh, you're a little bit late, Hazel. But yes, you were totally right with your method for working out relative atomic mass. Yes, Toby, yeah, you, you add them. So relative molecular mass is the sum of relative atomic masses of the molecule. Yeah, so somebody's doing, so Fatima, you are right, but in your exam, if they give you it to like three decimal places, you've got to use the numbers they give you. So they might put it to one decimal place or to two decimal places, but yeah. Yeah, apart from, that's totally right, Fatima, apart from the, you need 12.011. Oh, there's two, two Fatimas. I was talking to the Fatima al Salij. I'm so sorry. I cannot pronounce that, I'm afraid. But if you want to send a pronunciation guide in the comments, I will certainly um, figure that out. Okay, cool. So yes, so we're going to be doing our exact 12.011. Plus, we're just going to times the oxygen by two. And that gives us, does anyone want to work that out? Shove that in your calculator for me. What is 12.011 plus two times almost 16? Yeah, we've got 44, but we missed the decimal points. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Isaac. Yes, so we should have, oh, not quite Isaac, actually. We've got, yeah, yeah, Sue Savage, Sugar. Still the best name on YouTube. Um, 44.009. Wicked. Lovely. Yes, yeah, so all of you guys that put just 44, you don't want to do that in your exam. If they give you multiple decimal points, you must use the multiple decimal points. That's really important. Okay, so that was a nice quick section. I need some emojis again. Send me your emojis. How are we doing? Can we answer exam questions? Good. How do you know what to round it to? Uh, Lily, you want to round it to whatever they do in the question. So the standard for A-level is two decimal places. But if they put more or less in the question, then I would stick to those. But yes, two is the most common one. Zero, James. Now you now, now you're just confusing me. Does that mean you really get it, or that you're so confused you don't understand the number scale? Alex, I like the sunglasses emoji. We've not seen that one much. Okay, Amir. All right. So Amir, if you either want to give me a quick type of what is confusing or you want to sort of make a note of it so you can ask me at the end either is fine but you've got about 20 seconds to sort of say which part you didn't get 
James Polk, I'm glad you really get it. Anything? Okay, what's the difference between relative mass and relative molecular mass? Okay, cool. So relative atomic mass or isotopic mass is for that specific element. So what you're doing is you're finding the weighted average of all of the different isotopes. So like of carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14, you sort of do a weighted mass of those. Relative molecular mass is when you've got a molecule, so something like carbon dioxide, when you've got one carbon and two oxygens, and then you're just adding up those masses. Does that make sense? Weighted means what? So weighted um, Hamayan means, so you know here we have, um, we've got, uh, these are abundances. So in nature you find carbon 12 98.9% .9 of the time, you find carbon 13 1.1% of the time and carbon 14 less than 0.1. So weighted means that when we're working out the relative atomic mass, we have to times the mass by how common they are. That's why we do 98.9 .9 times 12, 1.1 1 .1 times 13. Um, so does that, is that make, starting to make sense? Does weighted mean gravity is taken into account? Not in this context. Um, that's in physics. Weighted, so like weight can either mean mass with gravity or weighted sort of can mean sort of balanced. Um, it can mean both things. Relative molecular mass used for compounds. Yes. Yeah, we can call them compounds. We can call them molecules. As long as they're bonded together. Okay, I'm gonna move on people. We're gonna do some exam questions and hopefully you guys will be all right with those. So the first one, um, what is the structure of uh, plus one ion of carbon 13, of a carbon 13 isotope? So how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons? 30 seconds to think um, and then don't write it in the comments yet, and then we'll all write it together so that people have a chance to work it out. Um, Vidit, it's because there's less than 0.1. Uh, if it says that in the exam, you just treat it as 0.1, but it basically means that there's very little, um, very little there. I feel like when I say to you guys, don't write it in the box yet, nobody listens to me. Well, very few people. All right, I've given up. <laughs> you can write it in the box. So uh, Wajiha, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, these, because this is a really basic topic, these, all of these questions are relatively early on in the paper, meaning that they're sort of slightly easier. Um, but that's just the nature. This is the sort of the first topic in A-level for pretty much all of the exam boards. We're getting lots of different answers. So I want you guys to remember that when there's a plus one ion, it means that it's, there's more protons than electrons. So be careful. Remember that it's an ion, it's not an atom. I'm getting more Cs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, people, it's C. Well done, James. Well done, Shunya. Well done, Megan, and so many more. So let's, if we have a think about the different parts of the question we've got. I, I mean, like I've sort of covered it up and I, that's not helpful. We've got a plus one ion, which means that there's a one positive charge, which means that we've got one more proton than we do electrons. But because it's carbon, if we're looking at, remember to be sort of having your periodic table up on the side if you need it, but because it's carbon, there's always six protons. The proton number never changes. So that's why like, it can't possibly be D because that's seven protons and that's a different um, element. So we've got six protons because it's carbon, but we've got, because it's positively charged, we must have one less electron. So that means we've got five electrons. So in this case, it's gotta be A or C. And then because it's the carbon 13 isotope, if we remember that we should be doing protons plus neutrons is the mass. So because we've got six protons, if we've got 13 minus six, that should give us seven neutrons. 
Ella, D, S, D, and P orbitals, that is a totally different topic. I think that's going to be like our fifth web class. So that's not relevant for this. T Tommy says, wait, if an electron is lost, a neutron is gained to make some atomic mass? No. So electrons mass are negligible, which means that we don't think about electrons in mass at all. So the reason that I've done 13 minus six is because we've got carbon 13 and that 13 represents our mass in total. And we've got six protons because it's carbon. And if you're looking at your periodic table, carbon has six protons um, because that's the atomic number. So to get the mass, you always do protons plus neutrons. So to get the neutrons from the mass and the protons, we're gonna be doing protons, sorry, mass minus protons, which makes seven. Um, the reason that we have, so the electro, the only reason we're thinking about electrons is because we know that it's a positive ion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, wicked. Okay. How come my periodic table has a massive atomic number? Alex, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, try to rephrase that question for me. Luna says, it, so if an atom is charged, has less electrons and more protons, it depends whether it's positively charged or negatively charged, Luna. So if it has more protons than electrons, then it's positively charged. If it has more electrons than protons, um, then it's negatively charged. So how do you work out I, I, I? There isn't a question, I, I, I. I think... So we're gonna be moving on to that. Can we do the next question now? My battery is dying. Yes, we can, Aisha. We can, we can hurry, but maybe you should find your charger. Um, how come my periodic table has mass above atomic number? I don't know. I don't know, Alex, AQA is messing with you. Um, what I suggest you do is look for the bigger one. <laughs> The bigger one is always mass, right? Because it's protons plus neutrons. So if it's messing with you the other way around, I am really sorry about that. Um, right, so quick next question. Ah, sorry, I said we were moving on then I didn't. Right, so can someone, can you guys tell me what is the relative atomic mass? And remember that there is a word in there that's really important that I kept mentioning. Yes, yeah, we're, all, we're getting it. So weighted is sort of the word that you really need um to get all of your marks so it's the weighted average mass of an atom relative to yeah, the mass of a carbon 12 atom so that's two marks there you get one mark for saying weighted average and you get one mark for saying it's relative to the mass of a carbon 12 atom you can also say it's relative to a uh, 12th of the mass of carbon 12. so how many you you got one mark for that one because you need to mention that it's relative to carbon 12. thank you tommy i am a calligrapher in disguise, uh, do calligraphers disguise themselves as chemistry teachers? I don't know. I'm not sure why they would. Okay, wicked. We're gonna move on to the last question. Um, Luna, these exam questions are a mix of AQA, OCR and FXL. Um, so they, I tend to make sure they include everything. Jennifer, the charge is plus one. Can you explain that? really quickly so really really quick because I've sort of we've got to move on because I'm running out of time but it's a positive ion so pos because electrons and protons uh, protons have a positive one charge electrons have a negative negative one charge right so if you have the same amount of protons and electrons that means that there'll be no charge but if you have one more proton than electrons, like in this case, like the answer, six protons, five electrons, that gives you a positive charge. Um, Jennifer, I'm going to have to move on, but like type something if you're still confused and I'll address it at the end. So we've got 
the last question. Uh, five gram sample of lithium containing two isotopes of lithium, lithium-6 and lithium-7, was found to contain 0.46 grams of the isotope lithium-6. Calculate the relative atomic mass of lithium for the sample. Give your answers to an appropriate number of significant figures. So if you guys, I'm going to give you a bit of a clue here. If you guys remember, I said that you only divide by 100 if you're given the abundances in um, percentage. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to do, do that. Anyone getting an answer? Is in is the answer over thirteen? No. So I want you guys to sort of think about how can you get the abundance from the information that you have because right now we don't have like sort of like a percentage written here, right? But we do know how many grams we have. We know we've got zero point four six grams of isotope lithium six. And we know that we've got five grams in total. So how can we work out our abundance? Any ideas? So 7.016 is in there. It's an important. Any ideas about abundance? Okay, I'm going to help you guys out. So in this case, our abundances are probably going to look more like fractions than like um percentages so to figure out the sort of abundance of each it already tells us that we've got 0.46 of lithium six right so i'm going to put like a 0.46 here as a little note to figure out how much lithium seven we have we just need to take away right because we know we've got five in total so we need to take 0.46 away from five to get how much lithium lithium seven we have Yep, yeah. Corp, cool. Charlotte, yep, yeah. you're right. Anyone? Cool. So that should tell us what we have for that. Can someone drop me how much is lithium seven in that case? If we've got. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. 4.54. So to work out sort of, these are just our grams. And what we want is for them to be in either like a fraction, a decimal or percentage to be able to do abundance. So what is it out of if we're turning it into a fraction? What will the abundance be out of? How much do we have in total? Five, yeah, thank you, Georgie. Ah, oh, similar name to me. And Esther, yeah, wicked. So now we can sort of write down that the abundance of lithium six is 0 0.46 over five, and the abundance of lithium seven is 4.54 over five. And at this point, we can sort of do what we usually do, where we're timesing our abundance by our relative isotopic mass. And in this case, we do not need to divide by 100 at the end because these are fractions and not um, thingies. Apparently my brain doesn't do words anymore. Not thingies, they're not percentages. Abundance is sort of like how much is there in the sample, Jesse. Cool, so we should be, I'm gonna start putting in the writing. So for lithium six, we should be doing 0 0.56 over five times 6.015 because that's its relative atomic mass. Yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. And then we're gonna add on our lithium seven. Oops, that should not be a zero. 4.54 over five times its mass, which is 7.016. And then we add them all together. And yes, beautiful Sue, it's gonna be 9.92 something, 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 something. Um, why do I divide it by five? So what we're trying to do, 
both Aisha and Luna, the problem with what we've got is that we've not been given abundances and we're usually given those in percentage. So we have to come up with something like an abundance. So we use a fraction. So we're saying that we've got, instead of saying something like I've got 10% of lithium six, I know that I've got 0.45 grams and I know that there's five in total. So the sort of fraction of lithium six is going to be 0.46 over five and sort of same with lithium seven. Yes, Fatima gets it now. Aisha, you, why do you divide it by five first? Aisha, did that explanation make sense? So we're, we're sort of putting it over five to say that we've got in the sample 0.46 over five is the abundance. What's the actual equation? The actual equation is on our, is, so it should be, yeah, we didn't actually write it down, did we? So the equation should be abundance times the, ooh, abundance times the mass. And then if it is a percentage over a hundred, if it's not, not over a hundred. And that should be the sum of So yeah, Daisy is 5.000 rather than, I prefer to convert it. Yeah, Isaac, if, if it makes more sense to convert to percentages, then you should totally do it that way. Just like if you prefer decimals over fractions, you should do it that way as well. You can convert it to percentages literally by just sort of doing the 0 0.46 over five times by 100 and then dividing everything by 100 at the end. But if you can kind of see, you end up timesing by 100 and then dividing by 100, that cancels, but that's all fine. All right, people, I'm gonna move on. But if we need to go through this again, when you ask questions at the end, that's fine. So oh, just keep in mind, if that sign means sum of, it's like that sort of straight E that I'm apparently drawing badly. Cool. All right, so we've got another question, I'm afraid. This one is is quite uh, tricky algebraically. Sorry I'm late to ask, but why is the relative atomic mass to do with carbon 12? Name one, it's literally just a convention. It's we, we picked carbon 12 to measure everything against. It's a really common um, element. So it's just, it's just a standardized thing. It's not because carbon is special in any way. It's just the one we picked to use. We had to compare them to something, right? So we compare it to carbon 12. Um, right, so we're gonna do this question and I'm apologizing in advance because it's really algebra-y. So I want you guys to try, <laughs> try your hardest to remember GCSE um, maths. Cool, so a naturally occurring sample of the element boron has a relative atomic mass of 10.8 in the sample. Boron exists as two isotopes, boron 10 and boron 11. Um, calculate the percentage abundance of boron 10 in this naturally occurring sample of boron. So what we're gonna do is sort of I'm going to walk you guys through this one because it's quite difficult. But if someone wants to chuck in how it works first, that's fine. So we've got, we're trying to work out the percentage abundance of something. It's kind of like a simultaneous equation. Yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to be coming up with an equation. Um, and by the way, guys, this is quite a difficult question. So if you're struggling with it, there's a reason it's supposed to be hard. Um, so we've been given the relative atomic mass is it's, it's 10.8. So I'm going to write that in already. And what we really, we want to, what we want to be able to do is figure out sort of, we've got, we're, we're being asked to calculate the percentage abundance um, of boron 10, which means that we're kind of going to have to work out the percentage abundance of everything, right? So what I'm going to do is if we remember that we do mass times abundance, I cannot fit the word abundance in there, mass times abundance, we've been given the mass, we've been given that the mass is 10 and that the mass is 11, right? Ah, oh, look at you guys, you guys are doing wicked things. Okay, cool. Charlotte, yes, you guys, yeah. 
So we're going to randomly assign X. So 10X is going to be our 10 times the abundance, which we don't know. So we're just calling it X. And we're going to add on 11Y. So you can't, yeah, yeah, Charlotte's got the Y in there. Cool. 11Y. And then the bottom is going to be X plus Y because we've got to divide it by sort of the total because we've not got it in percentage again. So like we added them to, like we did the, over the total for the last question as a fraction, that's what we're going to do here by adding X plus Y, which was the total abundance. Cool. So then we have to rearrange this. So I really hope you guys are remembering your, how to rearrange equations here. So to move over the X plus Y, we've got to, put it in brackets, and then we've got to multiply it out. So I'm gonna do that here for you. And if you guys need to recap some maths, you should do that because it's gonna be really important for your um, chemistry. Okay, so, so far we've got 10X plus 11Y equals 10.8X plus 10.8Y. We can sort of collect this all together nicely. So if some, does somebody want to sort of do that for me? If we're rearranging this so that we collect together all of our X's and collect together all of our Y's, what do we get? Anyone? Or have I lost you all? Can't you say Y equals 100 minus X? Math is not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tommy, can't you say Y equals, yeah, I did that, 100 minus X. Yeah, you can do, you can do it like that, but it's a different sort of working. Yes, thank you, Varisha. It is 0.2Y equals 0.8X. So because we have 0.2Y, yeah, I'm sorry, Isaac. Um, there are, if you look at the mark scheme for this question, there are multiple ways of doing it. Um, so I'm afraid that's, that's why it's being doing, done differently. So Lily, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run through what we've done so far. So we've got boron 10 and boron 11. And because to work out the percentage abundance of something, we don't know what it is, so we've sort of replaced the percentage abundance of boron 10 with an X and boron 11 with a Y. And we've put it over X plus Y because if you remember in the last one, we have to put it over the total. Um, and the total will be the abundance of X plus the abundance of Y. In the previous, you divided by weight. In this one, you divided by the sum of abundance. No, Shunya, it's never, it's never rude to ask a, a genuine question. So in the previous, so the reason is because in the last question, we were trying to work out the relative atomic mass. And in this question, we're trying to work out the abundance. So it's the other way around. Um, and again, no questions are ever rude. So I'm going to move on. So if we have 0.2y, equals 0.8x, what we can sort of assume is that we've got for boron 11 and for boron 10, we've got a 20 to 80 ratio or a two to eight ratio or a 0.2 to 0.8 ratio, right? Between the two abundances. And if you, it's sort of come up really nicely because those add to make a hundred so we can see it as a percentage already. We don't have to do anything to these numbers. So because there's a 20 to 80 ratio, we can say that boron 10 is 80% abundance. How many, <laughs> how many people got to 80%? Is that it? Yes, that is it. That's the answer. Kit, well done. Hazel, well done for getting to 0.2y to 0.8x. Georgie, does that mean that you got? <laughs> That's so confusing. Uh, okay, some people are getting it. Fashion is confused. 
where did I get 20 to 80? Okay, Amir, because it's 0.2y to 0.8x, so 0.2y equals 0.8x, you can, if you times them both by 100, you get 20 to 80. Yeah. Okay, so I actually really appreciate you guys saying that you prefer the 100 minus x method because I that means I can do that next time. So Alex, the, what the only thing you can do really is just practice doing exam questions is just the only way to sort of get practice of doing sort of the weird ones that come up. And that's why I put this in here because it is a weird one. Um, it's quite an odd topic, but we're gonna move on because I'm sort of running over time a little bit. How would I know to use algebra? So Jesse, I would know to use algebra because there are unknowns. So as soon as you've got a question with lots of sort of unknown values, it's often easiest to put it um, in the form of an equation where we can ac access topic past papers. Um, so we have um, topic questions on our website, but the actual past papers, there's quite a few different ones and I'm sure my colleague will put it in the, good night, Shunya. I'm so glad. Okay. So you guys, I'm happy. No, this is, this is the, is year 12, but you can use it for revision. Um, so what we're going to do is quickly rush through this because if you guys remember, there is a coupon that you guys are sort of very patiently waiting for. And I really appreciate that. So just to recap, we should remember all of our GCSE knowledge of atomic structure and the periodic table, which we did at the beginning and you guys are all wicked at. Um, we should be able to figure out what isotopes are and ions and understand atomic structure within that sort of realm. And we should be able to calculate relative atomic and isotopic mass. And remember, if those exam questions were really, really tricky for you, this is going to be published um, on YouTube. So you can go back and rewatch it and re have a go at those. I'm, a, I'm sad that I don't have more time to sort of like run through them lots. Um, and I will keep this in mind, perhaps have more time for exam questions in the future web classes. Oh, Ricky, I'm so glad that you love me. <laughs> um, but yes, ah, I like my hair too. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so Aisha, with time of flight, that's gonna be in our mass spec, um, our mass spec thingy. Oh, you're welcome, Fatima. Before you guys, lots of thank yous and goodbyes. So I'm gonna like rush forward um, because I really wanted to show you guys what we're doing. Um, we have a, a sort of 2.0 snap revise coming up. Um, and I wanna show you guys what that's gonna be like because it's this really smart system and I'm excited. Oh, look, you guys are gonna see, <laughs> see my fancy screen. Okay. So real, real quick, we have this cool thing coming up that essentially sort of streamlines all of your revision and you can pick your topics and you can pick your exam boards and then we sort of test what you know. Um, and then whatever you got wrong, we give you videos to sort of recap your knowledge on that. And if you need to skip ahead in the video because you already get it, then it has these sort of little things that can tell you how to do that which is really exciting. Ah, is it not showing? I feel like it's not showing. I feel like this happened um, before. Let me try and sort this out because it doesn't look like you guys can see what I see. Oh no. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. I figured out what's going wrong. All right. What I was supposed to be doing was showing our wicked website and I was not doing that. Um, can you see it now? You can, wicked. All right. So as I was saying, once you filled in all of your knowledge, then you do sort of like a self-marking quiz, which is super useful because self-marking, hurrah. We have cool revision guides that are really pretty, which I think is important. And then that we have a, like a bunch of exam walkthrough questions. So if you're confused about how the solutions actually work, explain them. And then we have predicted exam packs. And the cool bit about this is that once you've finished all of the exam questions for the topics, which happens, we've come up with a bunch that should be almost exactly the same. Um, 
and we also sort of like we've gamified it so you can see like sort of score yourself and battle with yourself to do better each week which is of course what we will all be doing and then i will be around or another tutor for a different subject to answer your questions online so all of this is sort of coming up and we've also got more web classes so it's more of me um so all of this is going to come on october the 16th so we're really excited about you guys being able to see that and i'm going to go back to the presentation because i have other things so just real quick um if you sign up now with our like special little code, you will be automatically on the basic plan when it comes out. And you'll also have the videos so that we already have on the website and the exam walkthroughs are already there. And then once it's come out, you can upgrade to pro or ultimate and the sort of drop-in support and the web classes will be on the ultimate. Um, but again, as I said at the beginning, we will have for the next few weeks, all of the web classes will be free. And then after that, there'll be like a few free ones, but mainly um, on the ultimate Snapvise plan thingy. Yes. Um, whoa. Oh, yes. So more web classes, more of me. I'm back on Thursday for year 13 stuff, but I'll be here on Tuesdays at 6.30 for year 12 stuff. So next week, I believe is math spec. So set a reminder on your YouTube and I'm gonna show you how to do that now because apparently I can use computers. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry guys. All right, yes. So here, you know, when you, if you search Snapvise on YouTube and then you go into our, either the home page where it sort of should have the upcoming live streams, then it's literally like this button, set reminder, and then YouTube will remind you. Um, Maisie, I like how they're free too that's why there's going to be some free ones um i do appreciate that students tend to be a little bit skint so that's why we've got some free ones as well and also it's a lot cheaper than a tutor which we like um and like your own personal tutor so i'm going to go back to the presentation because because life right so you guys are, have been so brilliant um, and you stuck around to the end. So now you get your free coupon code um, so that you can get one of your courses. So that's like one of your subjects, one of your exam boards for the whole two years. Um, and this is all the sort of videos and exam walkthroughs. And that's only going to be £17.97. And you probably spend more on clothing, on one item of clothing. And this will help you out for your whole A-levels. Um, so I would, I'd probably do that, right? Oh, wicked. And then somebody won the free um, thingy, free thingy, the free subscription. And it was Analytical Minds, which is a very apt, apt name. Um, I think we get a discount on version 2.0. So what you do is you sign up now. 2.0 is not out yet. And then as soon as the 16th comes, you'll automatically be swapped to the basic package of that. Even if you plan to go to Pro or Ultimate, it will be cheaper for you to do it now and upgrade than it would be for you to do it later. So I would do it. I would do it now. Um, how do we use the code? You go on our website and then it says, um, any discount codes? And then you put in the discount code and you think, hurrah. It's all very exciting. Right, people, do you have any questions for me? Any questions? Any advice? I want to get top grades, but I only got a C in chemistry. How should I revise? Rari, what I want to say, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. What I want to say about that is A-levels are tactical. So you can't just know the content. You have to be able to answer the questions the way the examiner wants you to answer them. So like, for example, earlier when it was like weighted, the weighted mean um, is the relative isotopic mass. The word weighted is key. And if you forget that word, you don't get your marks. So you should really be revising by doing like a bunch of exam questions and marking yourself so harshly. Like if you haven't said what's on the mark scheme, you haven't gotten it right. So obviously like we can help you with that because we've got all of our work through stuff. Um, 
but you can't just watch you have to be doing so you have to be actually doing the work um to practice over and over you need to be drilling it um when it comes to chemistry papers i always run out of time any tips so what i tend to do is take the amount of time you have and then you divide it by the number of marks there are in total on the paper and then let's say that gives you 60 seconds per mark you sort of keep an eye on your watch and if you started to go over your allotted time you leave the question and come back if you have time at the end um hopefully you will have been faster on some of them but yes take the amount of time divided by the number of marks and you'll have your calculator so you don't have to do that in your head um Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're welcome, Navy. Good to see you. How did I get 0.8x and 0.2x on the hard question? All right, <clears throat> let me skip back. Ah, it's gone. I deleted all of my lovely working. Okay, so just really, really quick. If we look at the fact, you're welcome, Flip Kicker. Um, we've got we've been given, instead of been giving abundances, so remember we're trying to do abundance times mass equals relative mass. But because we've got our relative mass, but we don't have our relative mass, sorry. Um, oh no, this is the wrong question. Apologies. Um, so I'm going to write that on the top here abundance times mass is equal to relative mass and here we've been given our relative mass so what we're doing is relative mass divided by mass equals abundance right instead to be able to find our abundance um but we're going to be we have to sort of put this in as algebra instead of doing it in the rearranged form so as abundance as we don't know abundance we come up with x and we put it next to the mass so we're going to pick boron 10 as x so we've got 10x and then we've got our 11 boron so we're going to put 11 and come up with this abundance as y so we've got 10x equals 11y over 11y and then we divide it by x plus y because that's going to be our total so if we think, if we randomly say that abundance is, for example, let's sort of shove in abundance for boron is 10%, that would have to be 10 over 100, right? So the 100 is going to be both abundances added together, which means that we need to put x plus y. So we've got 10x plus 11y equals x plus y. And we know that equals 10.8 because we've been given been given our relative atomic mass here so that's our abundance times mass so abundance is our x and y mass is our 10 and 11 and we've put it over x plus y so that our abundances will be a fraction and then we do algebra and we rearrange this so we do 10x plus 11y and we move the x plus y over there which means that it's 10.8 brackets x plus y then we have to multiply that out so we get 10x plus 11y equals 10.8x plus 10.8y. And then we rearrange this. So we take the 10.8, we put, take the 10x over here and we take the 10.8y over there. So that will give us in the end 0.2y and 0.8x. So that's because 11 minus 10.8, that is some dodgy writing, equals 0.2 and 10.8 minus 10 is 0.8. I really hope that's answered your question. Um, I didn't see any other questions. Oh, wicked. I'm so glad. All right. Is that everything? Yeah. Um. Ahmed said sometimes there's there's lots of different ways of doing questions like this. You got 10 for 10, you got 20 for 10B. So your algebra is probably dodgy, Ahmed. Um, you're gonna need to sort of maybe refresh your algebra a little bit to do some 
extra maths questions. If there are no more questions, I'm going to head off, guys. I'm going to go go do my evening. I hope you guys either, you know, rest and replenish so that you can do good work tomorrow or, you, or you're doing work or I don't know what you guys are going to do. Are you going to watch TV, go somewhere? You're welcome, Charlotte. I'm so glad to have helped. This is so weird for me because it's a web class and I'm usually in front of my students. So it's nice to get your comments and feedback. It sort of helps me figure out how you guys are doing with this. All right. You're welcome, Zach Zach. You're welcome, Georgie. I will hopefully see you guys next week for our next class. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm going to stop stop this share thank you